hard work, selflessness, patience, self-sacrifice. These are the meaningless platitudes that keep us all in our place at the bottom. Inculcating values of self-sacrifice in the lower classes was quite the propaganda coup. Rich people don't fall for it, though a lot of them use the words. Some leftists spread it around like gospel. They're going to force people to work hard and share and stop being greedy, and they're willing to erect a massive state apparatus to make it happen. They don't realize the systems of force that we live under are what make people greedy. When I talk about the system or systems, I mean the system of force that all of us live under right now. I mean a system that creates a class system by taking from most people and giving to a few, making them rich and powerful. I'm talking about capitalism. At least, that's what I usually call it. Um, but if you say government or empire or colonialism or markets, we're talking about basically the same thing. The system hasn't always been capitalist, uh, but throughout the roughly 6,000 years of its existence, it has always empowered the few at the expense of the many. Greed isn't common in societies never conquered by the state. You can see that from the book Society Against the State, which I link to in the description. They live communally. They share everything and even punish people, albeit very mildly compared to the state's punishments, for taking more than their share. It's not that they've eliminated poverty. It's that poverty is created by a ruling class, and they have no ruling class, so there are no rich and poor. It's not that they're holding back their greedy impulses. It's that there are no incentives to be greedy. The whole idea of greed, like slavery, money, government, or school, doesn't exist. But we don't live in their world. We live under an empire of capital, where greed is real. But where does greed begin exactly, and when does it become a problem? Is greed present in the mind of anyone who wants to get rich? That doesn't seem fair to me. I don't hate someone for trying to get rich. I get it. You don't want to be poor. You want the nice things in life. You want to have a safety net and no one else is providing it for you. I would not assume people were greedy and that's how they got rich. You could say greed is the reason they don't want to give up their wealth and hand it around like they would if they actually had consciences. If so, to say the problem is greed seems to imply it's fine to amass a fortune, just not to keep it. But the real problem is the system that enabled them to acquire all that wealth. After all, how do people get rich? Most of them use the system to their advantage. Again, tough for me to blame them for it, because, well, that's why the system exists. But if you look at how it works, you realize it's all based on force and violence and theft. The system was established by the violence of conquest, updated by the violence of law, maintained by the violence of police and prisons. Most people are kept in poverty or at least in debt, so we're desperate for money. The people who have money can pay us the bare minimum to work for them making them rich and keeping us poor. You can blame greed for creating and maintaining this system, I guess, but it doesn't really mean anything. Capitalism provides incentives for greed because the options it presents are to stay poor or greedily get rich. This system has a very powerful propaganda machine that has taught you from birth to work hard and be selfless. It teaches you the company's wins are your wins, or if the country benefits, you benefit. 
This is all nonsense, and usually the opposite is true, actually. When the company or the country, i.e. the rich people who own the company or the government, get richer, it usually means they have more power to keep you down. How did they get richer? Off your labor. But the propaganda doesn't tell you any of that. It tricks you into self-sacrifice for someone else's goals. They want you to give up your dreams in the name of altruism, patriotism, morality, and other words. They'll also throw the word patience at you. You have to be patient. Now's the not, not the right time to demand things. The people aren't ready to accept it. Well, you don't need them to. Only you and the people you're working with need to be ready. Working through the system has been tried for the whole time the system has existed, and it just results in more calls to be patient. Don't waste your time being patient. Figure out what you want and what you need to do, come up with a plan, and make it happen. On the one hand, everything owned by the capitalist class should be redistributed. On the other, it's still for you. I hear arguments about individualism versus collectivism, or selfishness versus altruism, but I think they're all false dichotomies. Looting, squatting, occupying, robbing, all of these activities can be both pro-social and pro-you, the individual, because you're simultaneously battling the rich and reducing their power while taking the means to a better life for yourself. If you're poor, the revolution is about you. If you're living in a dank basement or a shack and other people are living in mansions, well, you should be in those mansions. You've suffered more than they have, and it's because of them. You didn't agree to poverty. You didn't consent to long working hours just to make someone else rich. And you shouldn't have to wait around for the fabled revolution before you rectify the situation. If you're ready, the opportunities present themselves. For instance... Believe me, this is so <laughs> hypothetical. If you knew your local Proud Boys were in Washington, D.C., you could invite yourself to their empty homes and businesses. Not only is greed not the root of the problem, I would say the poor should start getting greedy. They should understand these systems and how class works, but then I expect a lot of them already do, being victims of it. If you're poor... The point is, ladies and gentlemen, that greed, for lack of a better word, is good. A shitty system that incentivizes doing terrible things in the service of your greed that's a problem. Getting called greedy just because you won't accept the bare minimum that you're offered? That's not a problem. Be greedy in your demands and follow them through. If they don't give you everything, take everything. When the system is destroyed and everyone shares the product of society again, greed will mostly peter out. When we have everything we need without the fear it'll get taken away from us, we won't need to make demands. Until then, don't accept a meaningless, precarious life of wage labor when you could have it all.